There's some people with OCD, they consider everything najis. The bathroom, it's one pile of najasa. The kitchen is najis. Anything that is wet is najis. They go to someone's home, if the carpet is a bit wet, that must be najis. The kitchen, the counters, it's all najis. If a child drank from a cup, that's najis. Everything becomes najis. And these people, they have an urge to want to wash everything. They wash the kitchen a couple of times a day. They wash the bathroom and the, and the toilet several times a day. If the carpet is, uh, is wet, they take out the carpet, they wash it, they bring it back. This is called OCD. This is obsessive compulsive disorder. And in Arabic it has a name. In Islam, there's a terminology for it. You know what it's called? Waswas. This is called Waswas. In English we call it OCD. In Arabic we call it Waswas. Those that think everything is najis. This is one kind of people. Another, when it deal when it comes to rituals, their wudu, wudu is supposed to take, you know, two minutes or three minutes. Their wudu it takes fifteen minutes. They wash every single part of their face. They look in the mirror. They make sure that every part of their skin is wet. They obsess over it. Their ghusl. You know how long their ghusl takes just look at their water bill look at their water bill and you'll realize how long their ghusl takes a ghusl is supposed to take no more than 10 minutes 10 minutes is a lot 10 minutes is a lot a ghusl is getting water to, to your entire body it doesn't mean going swimming it doesn't mean standing under a waterfall get water to your body and that's it some people, the ghusl takes an hour. An hour. That is called waswas. That is called OCD. They want to make sure that their that water reaches their entire body. That's good. Let water reach your entire body, but don't obsess. Don't obsess over it. A normal shower, a normal ghusl should take 5 minutes to 10 minutes. If you're taking longer than that, that is OCD. That is waswas. One day, one of the imams, I believe it was Imam al-Baqir, he came out of the shower. You know, previously they didn't have showers at home. They had public showers. People went to public showers and they showered. Men had their own section, women had their own section. They didn't have showers at home. We're living at an age, we're blessed. We're blessed to have showers and bathrooms at home. Previously, ask your grandparents. They didn't have showers at home. They would have to go to public showers. Imam al-Baqir came out of the shower. It was a public shower. And he had performed ghus. And he was about to leave. Someone told him, Ya ibn Rasulullah, there is a dry mark, there is a dry spot on your back. Meaning you missed a spot in your ghus. He told him he didn't he didn't have to tell me. That's fine, I will go and I'll and he didn't repeat his ghusl. He grabbed some water, he wiped his back, and that's it. Imagine if we were told we would have to go and repeat that ghusl three more times. He grabbed some water and he wiped it on his back and he said, That's it, and you don't need to tell me. You didn't have to tell me that there was a dry mark on my back. You see, Imams, they didn't obsess. But we obsess over wudu, over ghusl. I have to make, you know, I've seen some people when they perform wudu, they move the hair, they start combing to make sure that the water reaches the scalp. No, it's not that bad. When it comes to salah, when it comes to salah, there are some people that have waswas in salah. Am I in the first rak'ah or am I in the second rak'ah? Am I in the second or am I in the third? Is this the third or the fourth? Is this the fourth or the fifth? As soon as they go into salah, they begin to doubt. Which rak'ah am I in? 
This is waswas. Islam tells us that waswas is not something good. OCD is not something good. Treat it, cure it. And Islam has given us the cure. For example, when it comes to obsessive thoughts, does God exist? Is there a day of judgment? What will happen after, after death? Is there a heaven? Is there a hell? We said that if you genuinely have questions, then you have to go do your research. But if it's not questions, it's just doubt, it's obsessive doubt, then Islam says you're safe, you're okay. Rufa'a an ummati, Rasulullah stated in hadith, Rufa'a an ummati, tis, nine things have been lifted upon my nation. One of them, al-waswasatu fil khalq ma lam yantuk bishifa. Al-waswasa, you will not be held accountable for waswas. If you doubt God's existence, if you doubt God's mercy, if you doubt the day of judgment, just doubts, obsessive doubts, you will not be held accountable. You are not considered a kafir. You will not go to hell. No one will be hold you accountable. This is waswas. But you have to overcome. As for rituals, when it comes to rituals, those that consider everything najis, everything in the kitchen, everything on the floor, everything that is wet, you know, everyone who has wet hands that comes and shakes hands with you, Islam has a solution. Islam says, Kullu shay'in laka tahir. Hatta ta'lam. Everything is pure. By default, everything is pure. Everything is tahir. Unless you saw the najasa with your own eyes. If you saw the toilet, it's najis, then you consider it najis. If you did not see with your own eyes, it's tahir. If there was something wet on the floor, it's tahir. Say that it's water. The kitchen, the counters, are they najis? No, they're not najis. You count, you consider them tahir. If a child came and drank from a glass, is that glass najis? No, it's not najis. You consider that tahir. Someone shakes his hands, shakes your hands, and his hand was what? Is it najis? No, it's not najis. Everything is tahir. Kullu shay'in laka tahir. Hatta ta'lam. This is one. Two, we have another law that says, La shakka li kathir shak. If you doubt a lot, you don't pay attention to your doubts. If you doubt, is this the first rak'ah or the second rak'ah? We have laws, of course. If this is the first rak'ah or second rak'ah, your salah is void. Is this the second rak'ah or the second rak'ah? You say this is the third and then you have to do a rak'ah bi ihtiyat. Is this the third or the fourth? You say this is the fourth and then you do a rak'ah, you pray a prayer of one rak'ah as ihtiyat after. However, but if you repeatedly doubt in every salah, in every salah you repeatedly doubt, you don't repeat any salah any longer. Khalas. You pray once and that's it. Your wudu, if you repeatedly doubt, is it correct, is it not correct? You don't do it over. Your ghusl, please go easy on your water bills. Just perform ghusl once and that's it. Don't keep on repeating it. Perform your ghusl and get out of the shower and that's it. Don't keep on doubting. Don't keep on obsessing that did I do it correctly? Did I wash my entire hair? No. You don't need to do that. La shakka li kathir shak. We have another principle that says qa'idat al-faragh. Qa'idat al-faragh says that in salah, once you passed a stage and you doubted regarding the former stage, don't pay attention. For example, you're in sujood and you doubt whether your ruku' was correct or not, or did you say subhan rabbi al-azim wa bihamdih or not, don't pay attention, you passed. It's called the passing stage. If you passed from one stage to the next, and you doubt the correctness of the former stage, don't pay attention, continue with your salah. Islam has made it so easy for us, but we make it difficult. We make things difficult for us.